In this video, we're looking at the alternative methods that you can use to avoid using nested if statements, because let's face it, it's not long until they're out of control and difficult to understand. We're covering three methods in this video, so click the link below and download the example file to work along with this video. Once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. Here's the example that we're working with in this video. We have a customer column and a package column, whether they're basic, gold or platinum. And then we have their renewal price. So if they're a platinum customer, they get a 30% discount, a gold customer gets a 10% discount, and a basic customer gets no discount at all. So all we have to do is work out what the discount rate is and then calculate the final price. To start with, we're going to look at what happens if we use a nested if. For a nested if, the formula will look something like this, equals if, open bracket, and we want to test where the value in our package column, if that is equal to platinum. Now, if that's true, we know they get a 30% discount. But with an if statement, we only have a true or a false response. So if it's false, we then have to create another if statement. Say if, open bracket, the package is equal to gold, then it will get a 10% discount then we have our if false. So if it's not platinum and it's not gold, it then must be basic. So therefore it will then get a naught percent. So therefore we can close our first if and close our second if, and then we can commit that value. So that calculates the discount rate. We have an if inside another if. Now let's calculate the final price, which should just be the renewal price multiplied by brackets one minus our discount rate. So we'll close that bracket and commit that formula. So that's how we can use a nested if to then get our discount rate and then calculate our final price. But there are better methods and that's what we're looking at next. Where we have lots of different possibilities, nested ifs become a big problem because an if can only have two outcomes, a true or a false. But in our scenario, we have three outcomes, platinum, gold, or basic. Now imagine if we had 10 outcomes, that nested if is going to become exceptionally complex. But Microsoft have given us a different function to use in this scenario, and that is the ifs function. So what does ifs do? Well, the ifs function contains pairs of conditions and results, and it returns the first result where the first condition is true. And every condition must have a corresponding result. And if there's no value to match, the function returns an NA error. So instead we can set the last condition as true and the last result as the default value that we want if no other matches occur. Right, now let's go and try ifs inside our example. Equals ifs, open bracket. And we have our first logical test. So we want to test where our package is equal to platinum. If it equals platinum, we want to give a 30% discount. Next, we have our next logical test, and that is where our package is equal to gold. And in that scenario, we want it to return a 10% discount rate. Now, what we could do here is have another logical test to say whether it equals basic, and if it does, it should return 0%. We could close that bracket and commit that function. However, what that means is that We've got something defined for every element, platinum, gold, and basic. We could set up a default value so that if it's not platinum and it's not gold, it automatically goes to that default value. So to do that, rather than the word basic, we're going to use the word true. So that's the value of true, and it will then return 0%. And when we commit that, we now get the discount rate. We haven't nested any if functions inside other functions. Instead, we've used the ifs function which has that pair of conditions and then results. And that is much cleaner than using an if statement. Now, before you get excited about the ifs function, there is an even better method, and that is the switch function. So what does switch do? Well, switch checks a single value against a list of values and results, and the result for the first matching value is returned. So switch is very similar to ifs, but it has a shorter, function syntax. So let's go and take a look at our example. Here, I'm going to type equal switch, open bracket. 
The first argument is the expression. This is the value that we want to match. So we want to match the value from our package column. Then we have our pairs of value and result. So our first value, we platinum. And then the first result will be 30%. The next value will be gold. And the result will be 10%. Now we could have basic and then also 0% as a value. But with switch, we can have a default value as the last argument. So rather than having basic and 0% as a pair, we can just have 0% as the default argument. So I'll close that bracket and commit that formula. And now we get the same result as we had with our nested if and also with our ifs statement. But this time our formula syntax is even shorter because we have an expression and then the value that we're matching against it. So switch is a really good alternative for nested ifs. In our example so far, whether it's if, ifs or switch, we've actually got two issues. First of all, we've used a lot of hard coded values. The second issue is that our formulas are only set up to handle three scenarios. So is there a better option that we can use? And the answer is yes, we can use a lookup table with a lookup function. So how might that work? Well, let's go and find out by using xlookup as an example. What does xlookup do? Well, xlookup searches a range or array and tries to find a matching value. Once it finds a matching value, it returns the value from a corresponding range or array. So let's go and see how we can use this inside our example. You can see here we have a lookup table. It contains a package column and a discount column. So what we want to do is to look up the value from our package column and then return the value from the discount column. So I type equals x lookup, open bracket. Our lookup value is the value from our package column. And we want to look that up. Let me just move the tooltip. And we want to look that up from the package column of the lookup table. And we want to return the discount column from the lookup table. So I'll close that bracket. And when we commit that, it's looking up each of those values and then returning each value. Now, the great news about this scenario is that if we now get another package such as silver, and let's say that has 5%, if we now get somebody on that silver package, that will then flow through correctly. We don't need to update our formulas because everything is coming from our lookup table. So that's how we can use XLOOKUP. There are other formulas we could use. For example, we could use a VLOOKUP, we could use an index match, but the principles are the same. We're using a lookup table and a lookup function to get the values from that table. And it means we don't need to change our original formula if we happen to get a new package. Okay, so that's three ways that we can avoid using nested if statements. We can use the ifs function, the switch function, or a lookup function such as xlookup. Now, which method should you use? Well, ultimately we've got two different kinds of scenarios here. We've got the values included in the function or where we've got the values outside the function. I would say that if you want the values inside the function, then why not go for switch? Because it has the shortest syntax and it's probably the easiest to use. However, if you want to have the values outside, then you need to use a lookup function such as xlookup. It gives you the most flexibility. If you like this video, why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And once you've done that, click there. That's the next video that you really want to watch. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.